let's talk about how much it cost. So today we are going to cover the topic of how much did this project cost so far. And uh, while I didn't have a budget, I just gave an estimate on what I thought it would, would take me to, uh, to get this far and not really narrowing it down to how much money I spent. So I sat down today and I wrote the list of materials that I used and the prices of all the materials that I, I used and purchased. So with that, let's get started. How much did it cost to build this trailer? So the first thing that we started out with was obviously the trailer frame. And uh, I purchased my metal from a local steel yard, Swift Steel. And uh, I started out with 2x2 two two square tubing, 3 16 inch wall, and I think I purchased 10 foot sections. And I also purchased a length of 2x3 uh, for the tongue, 3 16 inch wall. And uh, with all the metal, I probably spent about $250 just on the metal alone. Then I purchased a 2,000 pound torsion axle and the axle was uh, approximately $318 uh, plus shipping, round that up to about $400. It was probably a little less, I'm going to say maybe $385, $390, somewhere in there. So we'll call it $400 bill easy. Trailer wheels. The wheels and tires that I'm using are 13 inch. I purchased those from a local Bimart. They, uh, they have somewhat of a small trailer section. Each wheel tire was approximately $89 each, so rounding up, say, $90, uh, spent about $180 on wheels and tires. Then also we have the uh, trailer coupler. It's a Reese 2-inch ball trailer coupler. I purchased that. I think at Lowe's, I paid about $25 for that. Also for the uh, trailer wheels, I used a pair of bearing buddies. So when I grease the bearings, I can also pack the bearing buddies and keep the uh, bearings protected uh, from getting all dirt and uh, grime inside. Those were roughly around $13 each. Then for the front of the trailer, we have the safety chain, which is a must have. Um, it's a haul master and I purchased that from Harbor Freight. It's a quarter inch chain, four feet long, and it had the hooks that uh, I needed for the back of my truck where uh, it connects. And I think I paid about $8.99, so $9 for that chain. On the back of the trailer, on the frame, I also purchased a pair of stabilizer jacks, and those were roughly uh, $25 for the pair. Then, because I'm not a metal worker, I had to have uh, all the metal welded. So there's a fabricator at the place where I work, uh, he volunteered to do the welding for me, and I paid him uh, about $150 for the welding, which is actually uh, very reasonable. If you try to hire somebody to weld, you'll realize real quick that uh, they charge a little bit more. So $150 for the welding, and then uh, last but not least for the frame, there was the primer and the paint, and uh, I spent about $30 on the paint itself for a grand total of $1,000. $82 for the rolling chassis uh, and hooked to my truck and towed it home. So that was uh, the trailer. Then for our floor base, so what the trailer's built on. The floor base, we used 2x2x8 uh, two by two by foot sections and I think I purchased around 10 sections of those and they were roughly around $2.50 each, give or take, somewhere in there. So you figure a total of about $25 for the 2 by 2s um, And then there was also the plywood sheeting that we installed over the 2 by 2s I used about five sheets of the 4 by 8 by quarter inch, and it's a hardwood. So those were roughly around $15 each for five sheets for a total of $75. And then we also had... Uh, um, so the flooring that I used, uh, I purchased from Lowe's, and at the time that I purchased it was about $1.75 for a square foot, and I purchased a 10 by 12 uh, section, and that cost around $210 just for the, uh, the vinyl flooring. And then there's an adhesive because it's a fiberglass backing, uh, uses 
use a fiberglass floor adhesive and that was roughly around thirty dollars a gallon uh, there's also the uh, the undercoating what did I what did I coat the bottom with well I used a rust-oleum and I painted it in uh, three parts I used a primer and then I used two coats of black uh, rust-oleum enamel and I think I paid around twenty five dollars uh, for the paint itself. And then you have the miscellaneous uh, staples, nuts, bolts, screws, etc. And I threw in an extra $10 for that um, for a grand total of $375. Then next we came to the walls. We have the studs, we have the paneling, we have the the roof sections inside and outside. And uh, for the studs themselves, I used one by twos by eight foot sections, and at the time I purchased those, those were roughly around two dollars each, and I think I purchased around fifty pieces, give or take somewhere in there, fifty, fifty-two pieces, and so you total that, that's about a hundred dollars just for the one by twos, and for the one by twos, I couldn't find any two by two uh, that were straight enough most of them were curved so bad that you could actually build a boat out of them so with the Douglas fir 1x2 sections I just double those together glue and uh, staple those together for a 2x2 two two wall and I think I put them on 12 inch centers which is probably fairly uh, short but uh, I wanted it sturdy next was the plywood sheeting so for the inside the exterior the interior on the roof and the exterior I think I ended up with about 20, 26 sheets of the 4x8 by, by quarter inch hardwood at about $15 each. Give me a grand total of $390. And then uh, for the paint, I used uh, three different colors of paint and they were roughly about $20 a gallon from a local Bimart. So you, you're talking about uh, 60 bucks for the painting. Then you have a miscellaneous tape drop cloths, glues, fasteners and such and I just threw in uh, 50 bucks that's probably a little on the on the high side now in between the walls for the insulation and also for the floor I purchased uh, at Lowe's some uh, 4x8 sheets of uh, of that uh, rigid foam and I got about five sheets of that at roughly $18 a sheet so we're talking about ninety dollars there so just the walls the studs the paint and the insulation came to a whopping six hundred and ninety dollars moving on in we have the cabinets we have the benches we have the tables and uh, different woods for that so for the cabinetry and the benches and the kitchenette and tables and such uh, the plywood that I used was again the four by eight by quarter inch hardwood and I had a, about four sheets of that there was a lot of scrap left over that I utilized and uh, when I when I finished everything I didn't have that much left over so four four by eight by quarter inch hardwood sheets fifteen dollars each came out to about sixty dollars then we had uh, the plywood that we used for the tabletops and for the benches and for the countertops and also for all of the uh, cabinet doors I used about six sheets it comes in a two foot by four foot section by half inch and I purchased that at uh, Lowe's and those were roughly around fifteen dollars each so what did I say ninety dollars is what I have for that about six sheets and then uh, around the edge of the tables um, I used uh, uh, an edge trim veneer and I think I purchased around three packages of that, $7 each, so $21. Then for the bench seating, I had uh, over at our local Ace Hardware purchased uh, about four packages <coughs> of the hinges, which are piano hinge, and those were roughly around $10 each, so $40 for the hinges. And then for the cabinets, we have the pull handles and we have the hinges for that. And I purchased about 15, I think, of the of the handles, at roughly, and I think I'm guessing on the high side is about four dollars. I'm thinking it was 
more like three dollars but I'm gonna call it four dollars each for a total of sixty dollars just for the handles for the hinges um, because of the amount of cabinets in here I ended up with about 26 hinges they came uh, two per package so uh, they were roughly about two seventy five three dollars each so you're figuring on thirty six dollars for the for the hinges so for the cabinets um, benches tabletops countertops um, wardrobe kitchenette we have a total of three hundred and seven dollars so it's starting to add up a little bit here moving on over to our little kitchenette I ended up with the uh, the laminate that I use for the countertops and for the tables uh, I purchased one sheet four by eight and that was roughly around eighty something dollars so I'm gonna call that about ninety dollars and then I used a weld wood contact cement um, for adhesive and that was thirty dollars a gallon um, purchased the stainless steel sink got that on eBay I paid around sixty dollars for that uh, for the faucet I also purchased on eBay um, fifteen dollars for the I think it was around fifteen or eighteen dollars for the faucet and then we had a strainer uh, with the uh, connectors that I purchased from eTrailer.com that came in around thirty five dollars I'm probably a little short on that there was some shipping involved for a grand total of $230 and that's for the the kitchenette area moving on to uh, our cushions so the cushion material I purchased from foam factory um, and I can't say enough about those if you're going to purchase uh, foam get the best that you can because you're going to be sleeping in this and you want to have a comfortable time so uh, there's eight pieces two per side front two per side for the back so I've got eight pieces uh, the high quality foam five inch material I've paid roughly around three hundred and thirty dollars then for the uh, fabric to cover the cushions at uh, one of the RV surplus stores that I uh, I like to go to that little candy store I bought uh, actually I bought 20 yards but I only used 11 yards so I'm only going to count what I use 11 yards at five dollars a yard which is very reasonable fifty five dollars uh, and then because I had the foam all pre-cut and I had the material um, I took it to a, a, a seamstress who had like 40 years in the business and to to cut all the material to sew it all together she installed uh, all the zippers and everything like that that cost about three hundred dollars um, and then we have the uh, the window treatment so we we use the uh, sail right um, rails to hang the curtains I purchased the the curtain material at Walmart um, so with the uh, what do I got one two three four windows here I spent roughly around 175 give or take I'm gonna say it's probably a little bit more than that on the uh, on the windows themselves for the the curtains and the rails and such and that gives us a total of eight hundred and sixty dollars next was uh, all of our lights and wiring so for the interior lighting I use the uh, the puck lighting and I purchased a set of six packs so I bought two of those a total of 12 lights and for a set of six each package cost forty nine dollars so for a total of ninety eight dollars the wiring it's the little stuff that gets you so I mean you can go out and you can buy something really big and you know you pay for it and you, you know what you got but it's the little things that you have to keep going after and you buy this and you buy that and you need a little of this and a little of that that adds up so uh, I gave a hundred dollars for the wiring which is probably a little bit on the low side not to mention just the trailer wiring um, and with the uh, miscellaneous terminals and connectors and clamps um, I threw in another hundred dollars for that so you're looking at around 150 to 200 dollars just for all of the wiring and accessories that you need for that and then I purchased the uh, the switch the eight gang switch to turn on and off my lights I paid about forty five dollars for that and that gave us a grand total of 
$343. Now, um, the next question or purchase that I had was how much for the windows and how much for the doors. So at the local, uh, well, I wouldn't say local, it's about a three hour drive, two and a half, uh, RV surplus store, they have hundreds and hundreds of styles and sizes and colors of windows. Now, at the time that I purchased my windows, they weren't inside the store in the warehouse. They had them out back, so they were, they were pretty dirty and had been sitting out there, it looked like, for a long time. I had to dig through quite a few to get matching pairs and find the rings. And at the time, I think I, think I may have paid like $25 per window. The front window um, was on the inside of the warehouse, and that was a little expensive. I think now they're charging anywhere from... Um, fifty to seventy five dollars for the smaller windows the front window cost me a hundred dollars so the front window was a hundred side windows at the time I purchased was about twenty five dollars each so seventy five dollars for those and then the RV door if you go to the RP, uh, RV surplus store they have uh, a ton of doors standing up and in the corners and leaning in racks and such and uh, they just flat out $200 per door. Doesn't matter what size they are. They have six foot, seven foot. They, they have some that are, you know, the size that I chose here, which was about 70 inches, somewhere in there. So $200. So for the windows and the doors, I spent a total of around $375.